Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're back with another video sponsored by WD on their MyCloud series of products. And we've been covering features that we haven't yet looked at uh, that you can do with these devices. And today we're going to be installing WordPress uh, on this EX2100. WordPress is installable on everything from the WD MyCloud mirror back there, the white drive, uh, on up the product lines. Everything but the single drive uh, MyCloud can take the WordPress installation. Now, if you're not familiar with WordPress, uh, it is a content management system that basically is the engine behind a vast majority of websites that you're probably already visiting on the web. It is very easy to install. It's very easy to uh, manipulate. There are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of templates available to kind of get everything looking the way you want it to look. And uh, you can install it on these devices. Now, I would not recommend uh, running a website accessible to the outside world on these. these again, these are uh, powerful little devices, but really not powerful enough to invite the whole world in. So I think this is better suited for uh, doing development work. Like if you want to build a website before you put it on the internet, you can build it in here, uh, get it working, and then pull it out and upload it to your server. Uh, I would also maybe suggest an intranet where you could have people within your organization communicate with each other like a forum or something like that. Uh, those things are very useful. But again, I would not uh, make this uh, world accessible because of how it works. It'll be running on here, but if they can get into the WordPress site, they would also be able to access your MyCloud's control panel too. And I would really suggest that's not the best uh, uh, way to uh, implement WordPress on one of these devices. So that caution aside, uh, let's get into the control panel and get the WordPress installed. So we are on the main page of our EX2100's control panel. I'm going to scroll over to the right here. I'm going to select apps, and then I'm going to click on uh, the add app button here. And we'll see now we have a whole bunch of different options. We'll probably cover a few more of these in the future. We did already cover the Plex Media Server. And what I'm going to do is go over to WordPress, and I'm going to click install. And this will take a second for it to download from uh, the WD servers. But uh, once it is done installing, we can then go about configuring everything. So now it is already installed and ready to go. I'm going to click on WordPress, and then uh, we have it running. You can also turn it off if you want while keeping it installed. And we'll go to configure now. And what this is going to do is actually bring us to a different website, uh, which is now the WordPress uh, site running on our WD MyCloud here. So I'm going to call this a test site. And I'll use my username of admin, and I'll put in a quick password here just to get in. And I'm going to type in a fake email address, but you may want to type in a real one because you can uh, have it send uh, notifications to you. Uh, so we'll do that. And now we'll install uh, WordPress and we'll let this uh, do its thing. It just takes a second for everything to get going. Uh, now that we have uh, everything installed, I can go back in and then uh, log into our new website. Now I should note that uh, the address is going to be uh, the same address that you would normally hit your WD MyCloud at. So you can see here we've got WD MyCloud EX2100.local. Uh, all it's going to do is add a WordPress uh, folder to it. So you're just going to go to slash WordPress and that will get you into your site. So we're going to log in real quick here. And now we are on the dashboard. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is because uh, WordPress is updating itself all the time. So the first thing you're going to want to do uh, is update WordPress itself. And you can do that uh, just by clicking on the Update button here. And that will uh, go out and uh, download the update from the WordPress servers. And we'll let that uh, do its thing here. And it'll unpack the update, verifying it. And uh, now we are good to go. So now if we're going to get redirected, we have to log back in again with the uh, same password we did before. And now we have to update the database real quick. Uh, and that should take just a second. And we should be ready to go here. Let's see how it looks. There we go. So we've got the latest version of WordPress now. Uh, what's cool is if I just pop open another tab here and uh, go back to our EX2100 slash WordPress, you'll see that the site uh, that is kind of built by, by automatically just by installing it is already here. So we've got a little post here. Uh, we have the title here. And I'm not going to do a, a WordPress tutorial in this, but if you go and find some of the WordPress tutorials online, uh, you'll be able to see exactly how you can configure the site uh, to do exactly what you want it to do. So we have uh, pretty much the whole thing up and running here. I can go in and install different plugins if I want. I can even change uh, some of the templates. Maybe we'll just pick out a new theme for our site. And uh, maybe I'll go and pick up, uh, we'll switch over to, let me dismiss this real quick. Uh, maybe we'll activate uh, this 2011 theme instead and then see how that changes everything. And we can go back to our test site here and refresh. And there you go. So you've got 
uh, the ability to see how these templates work and how easy it is. And the, for the most part, uh, you can actually uh, access most of the things you need to do to customize the site just from the WordPress control panel, which is pretty handy. But uh, you might want to be able to do more than that because sometimes when you're developing a website, uh, you need to get into the code of that site. Now, in order to make some changes to the files that are in the WordPress installation, we're going to need to activate SSH on our MyCloud here. And I'll show you where that is right now. So what we're going to do is go back out to your main menu here. Uh, you're going to go to settings and you want to click on network and uh, what you'll see is a whole bunch of stuff that is likely not activated and the one we want to turn on for this uh, is called SSH which is uh, going to give us the ability to do that. Now this is an important warning here because you're going to be able to see things that uh, actually drive this device. So you want to be careful about uh, clicking around and deleting things that are outside of that WordPress directory because you're basically get, being given keys to the uh, back-end engine of the MyCloud device. So we're going to accept this warning just so it knows uh, what we're doing. I'm going to type in a password that I'm going to use uh, to access this device and uh, click OK and now uh, it's going to activate that service and uh, at this point we'll be able to get access to uh, our WordPress files using uh, an FTP client for example. So I'm going to pop into Transmit uh, which is the one I use on the Mac. All right, I've got Transmit loaded up on my Mac. This is an FTP client, and this, these conventions will be the same no matter what platform you're on. Uh, so what we're going to do is click on SFTP, and we're going to type in the address for our MyCloud. SSHD is the username, which was the username we got when we turned on the SSH service on the MyCloud a minute ago. And we're going to type in the password that we set for that service when we set it up. We're going to click connect and then it's going to drop us into the MyCloud. Uh, we're now logged in as the root user essentially in that user's folder. So what we need to do uh, is back out to the main root directory. So I'm going to navigate uh, just to the slash here and that will get us onto the root directory of the whole device. Now remember that warning we saw, uh, you don't want to mess around in here because you could uh, do something that might make your MyCloud not work properly. So you want to be very, very careful what you click on uh, and very careful not to delete anything. But what we're going to do here is go to the var folder VAR and then we're going to look for www which is right at the bottom here and then we're going to go over to WordPress and if I click on there whoops I don't want to rename it I go on there you will see all of the files that are driving our WordPress installation and I can go into the content folder I go over to themes go over to uh, the 2012 theme for example and then I can go in and start editing the code and make some changes to it. So you're able to really just get in here uh, just like you would if you were uh, running this uh, website on a uh, hosting provider out on the internet. The advantage is, is that uh, you're running it on your MyCloud. It's very easy to get this installed. You saw it was one click to get the whole WordPress installation uh, up and running on here. So you don't have to install a virtual machine or build another server. You can just run it uh, right off of this. When you get the site done, you can pull it out of here upload it to your hosting provider and that site can go live. Really convenient, nice little development environment. It's also good for intranets also if you wanted to put like a, a forum on here or something like that. And for most of what a lot of people would do, you don't need to go through the steps we just did to edit the code. You could do most of uh, the editing perhaps from the WordPress control panel if it's very little things that you want to do. And most of the plugins and uh, most of the themes can be installed and modified uh, just within the WordPress control panel that we saw before. So there's a lot of great resources for WordPress out there if you want to learn it. And it's a really neat way to learn WordPress because you can do it all inside your network uh, on one of these devices and nobody's going to see or have access to it. So you can really play around and uh, get everything to work. And if you screw up, you can just uninstall WordPress and then start over again and you're uh, no worse for wear either. So pretty cool stuff uh, on the MyCloud here, and that is uh, the WordPress app. If there are more things that you want to see, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to thank uh, WD and hope you will too for sponsoring this series of videos. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.